All right, so I want to make a few points on leash aggression. Uh, one of the common cause, or a few of the common causes, and what I think a lot of it is, a lot, a lot of the time, at its core. So I think it's print no place. A major component of it is basically a sensory processing issue. So he's a good example of it. No place. Good boy. Now, I've come across it a few times, and, and excuse me, not just leash aggression, but where they redirected the owner um, or the handler, first with the leash. So, it's, um, it tends to happen, it, well, it happens with dogs that are highly predatory a lot, but that's, you don't, you're not running into that quite as much with pets. It tends to be a lot of dogs that are like working dogs, competition dogs, that kind of thing. With pets, I think what it is a lot of times is actually it's a response to, uh, not totally, this is in tandem with overexcitement um, and a, a few other things. No place, let's go, no place. A couple of bad incidents maybe with other dogs, whatever. There are other contributing factors, but one of the major ones can be tension in that leash being produced by the owner, usually because they're anxious because they got a crazy dog in this vicious cycle. The dog feels this tension, which only it engages their oppositional reflex. They want to move forward. And it's digging into them. And it, it, it's, it, what it does is it agitates them, particularly if they have some type of pinch collar on. That's what he had on with his owners. And look, I use pinch collars all the time. I mean, but I use them. I really good leash work. I mean, you do this for a living. What people typically do is a star mark on now, but they're talking, sorry, buddy. <laughs> it's just constant tension in that leash. And what happens is very similar to if you've ever pet a cat, okay, and for a while the cat's liking it, and then, and then you do it for too long, and the cat just out of nowhere goes, Dock. what that, I think what I heard, I don't, I have, I'll have to look this up, but I think it's perfectly, it's a perfect analogy if it's true. That actually creates an electrical um, charge on the cat's back somehow. And that's what the cat's responding to. And it's like a reflex and it's a pain response, right? Like, ah! They don't mean it. So Woody, that's what he's been doing is he's been, no, oh, place buddy. Okay. He's been, um, He's been responding to that, I think. That's been a, a major contributing factor. And he's, he's been redirecting it, it, like their shins. And then, you know, all these dogs will do it. Uh, and, and then, you know, it just looked like they did something bad. So he just did it to me. I, I, he took me by surprise. I'm moving him along quickly, too, which I typically don't do. But I, I feel like he can handle it. He's just, he, he's, he just needs to just fucking get over it. Like, get some exposure under his belt. Whatever. So I, I, every dog's different. I just this guy I'm bringing along quick. So he he did. He redirected at me. He didn't break skin. He got a little piece. It was, he's a shin nipper. He's a little pussy. So, um, what he was responding to that it was basically an embedded habit. But Butchie was behind us. Butchie should have been in front because you don't have as much control if they're like trying to stay behind and you can take one in the ass or whatever. So I made a mistake, but like, um. It's an embedded habit, you know, it's like conditioned in at this point. And I, when he gets overexcited and over agitated, nope, place. If he's being restrained at all now, nope, place, buddy. Good boy. That's his major coping mechanism. So that gets to part two, which is what's a better tool for leash reactivity a lot of the time? And I think it's it's the e-collar. Used correctly at low levels and properly timed. So but you get it takes a while to condition them to it. And but it can shut it can shut their bullshit down. So after he took a little nip at me, I gave him a, a fairly high e-collar correction for about two seconds. Just because he, I didn't want to come to, to come back at me again in, in, in case he was actually real, which would be a surprise. But And then after that, his, you know, distraction level uh, e-collar setting was, was fairly high for what I normally do. Um, you know, he's just really charged up. So we want to override that. And uh, he was perfectly responsive to the rest of the walk. We finished the walk with him and Butch. Next, I had them not, Butch was on my right, he was on my left, and it was fine. And he's a typical uh, case of leash aggression, reactivity, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
he doesn't really mean he doesn't really want to I mean he would he would fuck a dog up but it's not like it's he's just a, he's just an idiot <laughs> they're just like highly impulsive and they don't know what to do and they're like ah, ah, and then they go nuts so I it's important to think of it as in many ways as a some sensory processing issue that's being no place buddy that's being um, contributed to heavily by poor handling oftentimes and it, it's restraint plus the agitation from the caller and that constant tension plus extreme excitement leads to okay in the direction from you know where they feel that the pain stimulus uh, it's not to be taken personally either um, so th that's one thing the other thing is he, he He's so impulsive. I mean, you, it's so easy to see. There's, there's been like no boundaries in the home and stuff like that. He doesn't have a lot, lot of structure. I don't think he's been excessively spoiled because he, he doesn't have entitlement issues. He's not a dick. You can usually tell like the real dickish fucking dogs that are just like entitlement issues. He's, there's no confusion of hierarchy. It's a lack of leadership, but there's no like confusion about status or something like that. And part of that's probably just. That's not in his nature to be up really socially mobile. And part of it is like, you know, they're trying. They don't know it. And, you know, so like he he's um, just running around the house like a like a chimp kind of just doing his thing, popping around. He didn't really have any command structure. He won't hold his commands. He's got a very low attention span. He's funny. I really like this dog a lot. So, you know, but if he doesn't have that in the home, how the fuck is he going to have it outside? You know what I mean? And and that <clears throat> gets into another point about leadership. When you're provided, and leadership is, is multi-dimensional. A lot of it's about controlling resources, but really providing them with your needs, not mental stimulation, exercise, um, all that stuff, and engaging with them, playing with them, all kinds of stuff. But if you've established it clearly, correction means a lot more to the dog, okay? Uh, as well as praise, and as well as, as other you know high value rewards, particularly you know like I'm, I'm building it with him where we're doing a lot of gameplay and tug. It's it's which is interactive and enhances the relationship in and of itself. So those rewards and those corrections they have a ton more meaning when they truly respect you and look at you as a leader as opposed to just you know I love mommy, I love daddy. Like I love ice cream or hot dogs, but you know, I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want. It's like, it, you'll be close to your dog. You know, if you give them that, that structure and be fair with them, don't lose your patience or anything. It's more about consistency and timing than anything else. But establishing leadership is critical because in those, in those moments when they are charged up, especially if, because if you actually have to interrupt their bullshit with, maybe raising your voice or something like that say to interrupt the dog fight and which I, I I don't keep an elevated voice in training except for rare circumstances like maybe to prevent an aggression incident so say you got to raise your voice now they're that much more dialed into you and listening to you they can it just interrupts all their bullshit because they they have a lot more respect for you and no place and what you say is meaningful not just because they're afraid of correction or this or that. Shh, would you relax? But because it, they want to, they, they have a relationship with you. It's almost, I don't want to make human analogies like they don't want to disappoint you. <laughs> you know, I really like my boss, but I don't want to disappoint me. Not really like that. You know, I, but they're responding in some way, I think, on you know, an instinctual level to a properly framed relationship. However they do it, you know, who knows. But I do know that. That relationship's there. It's powerful. And what you say has a lot more meaning to them. So, I mean, we got that going already because I, you know, I, and part of it is correction, discipline, okay? But it's it's really like a contract. This is our contract, man. You know the fucking rules, and I know the rules. And we're both, I'm abiding by them 100% of the time. I'm giving you what you need. I'm bending over backwards for you. And you got to do the same for me got to be reciprocity there you know and I think that on some doggy level they sort of intuitively understand that kind of fairness uh, especially and they don't understand 
fairness to be equality either. That's a big, big mistake to think that. You know, it's it's about consistency. These are agreed upon terms, and it's going to be like that all the time. Nobody plays. It. Good boy. All right. So, a lot of different ideas here, but the contributing factors. The primary one is that I think in a lot of ways with the redirecting, it's a sensory processing issue, and, and you typically see it. And a lot of dogs super high prey drives, and that prey prey drives being interrupted, and they are um, engaged and want to move forward, and then all of a sudden you introduce restraint. They're very likely to redirect. That's a sensory issue. Same thing with dogs that are highly pain sensitive and redirect. Okay, they're, they're, again a sensory issue. But with these guys, he's not pain sensitive, but he's he's developed with all these different variables that kind of built-in response at this point, it's conditioned in. And it, it becomes reflexive over time because I wasn't applying you know, any kind of pressure improperly. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's basically that, I think, with, with dogs like this. And again, it's not to be taken personally. Try not to lose your shit if you take a little nip in the shin, you know? I mean, he... he he knows not to fucking do it again, you know, but I didn't, I didn't fucking have a meltdown on him. But I let his ass know. Mm -mm -mm. You know, and he was going to think twice about doing it again next time. But right after I made up to him. Cool, and then we finished our walk. It was great. So, um, but yeah, think about it in those terms and, and, and think, because this is a super common problem. I think people got to do a better job of understanding it. And what I'm describing is the most frequent cause that I've seen. My old buddy Otis, he was a shit nipper too. It was the same thing. So really don't use a prong if you haven't seen a good trainer and don't have good handling skills. That's a, that's a big takeaway from this. The other one is the e-collar is a superior tool typically for leash reactivity. Because you're not pulling on them. All right, so there's, there's really nothing to redirect toward. Or if they do, if you position the e-collar, you know, you're here, the dog's here on your left, position the e-collar, on the dog's left, and if you say you did it too high, you redirect it. It's going to redirect in the in the direction of the pain stimulus. It's out there, not toward you. Which again shows it's not personal. You see, they're they're just going ah, toward something that's hurting them. They just the direction where it's coming from. It's not like you motherfucker, because then it then it then it come after you. You know, regardless of what side the e collar is on. All right, so the e collar is a little bit of a better tool. It doesn't engage the oppositional reflex. Properly timed, conditioned in properly at right levels, just kind of interrupts that, uh, you know. All right, that's it. Good boy, Woody.